Hello friends, welcome to Learning Sessions and today in this video we are going to discuss about the Retail Banking and Wealth Management and we are going to start with the module C of the RBE development. So if you are preparing for the same, do watch this video till end and let me tell you that the full course of RBE development is available where we will be covering the full course videos, chapter wise, professor questions, mock test, mega mock test and each and everything so as to make sure so as to clear the JRB exam in the very first attempt. And simply on sign up you will be getting access to all the free PDFs of all the JRB syllabus over there. So simply do sign up on our website jarb.learningsessions.in and further you can be getting all the pdfs free of cost navigating to the pdf section over there so let's start the session over here and it's related to the delivery channel in retail banking now what do you mean by delivery channel it is actually the mean it is actually the medium it is actually the method by which the product and the services are being offered and being delivered to the customers over there and there are multiple channels like we are having the internet banking we are having the mobile banking we are having the pos we are having the kiosk we are having the uh, cash dispenser machines we are having the branches so there are different methods of distribution by which we can be actually be uh, transmitting or particularly catering the services to the customers over there right now in cases of bank we are having the two types of delivery channel one we are having the physical channels like it is a case of branches or we are having the extension counters or we are having the uh, business facilitators and business correspondents with us and if we talk about the remote channels we are having the atm that is the auto teller machines we are having the internet banking and we are having the mobile banking over there first of all we are going to study all about the physical or the direct channels why these are direct channels because the employees interact directly with the customers over there there is direct interaction between the customers and the employees of the bank okay like in the cases of banks we are having the branches now branches are the primary direct channels these are primary direct channels now if, even if we look at the uh, in the history over there in the past over there we were only having the branches through which the customers were actually visiting the branches and for the employees were catering the services to them okay so now what is the importance of branches in the retail banking now branches actually do give a tangibility to the intangible services like the bank offer services which are intangible but now the bank the customers are coming to the branch they are basically feeling the ambience around them they can actually go for the infrastructure and all the things and they can interact with the customers over there so first of all it's related to it gives a tangibility and second one it's related to there that there is a communication when we are interacting with the customers when we are interacting with the employees we are having a human sense we are having a human factor over there which gives a sense of particular good experience over there right so that's actually good related to it that's also importance and further physically seeing the bank staff and particularly affecting the transactions and that basically brings a bonding in between the customers and further the uh, employees over there and further what are the essentials of good branch a good branch must be having a, a good layout and it must be having a good ambience it must be having the available floor space so as to provide maximum effectiveness and coordination it must be in such a manner that it will be promoting the efficiency and further it will be promoting the internal communication and it will be providing a comfort to the customer and for the congenial work environment will be provided and further it will be providing it will be basic serving as a good image building tool like if you basically visit a private bank you basically see wow, what's an infrastructure like and further let's say if you, you visited a cooperative bank or particularly right which are, which are not actually those that much do have in that scenario you'll be missing some parts over there so it basically builds a good image and also it helps us to reducing the cost as the facilities are planned for maximizing the efficiencies right and further if we talk about the branch layout and the service delivery total automation can be there single window operator concept can be there and further it can be the case that the counters are designed individually as a desks over there so as to create one-on-one -on -one, uh, relationship with the customer like we are having the relationship managers may i help you desk or something like that where the customers can be interacting themselves and further can be having a feel of that they are having their personal bankers with them right and further it's related to personal banking branches now what do you mean by personal banking branches uh, rather than that particular branch which is actually dealing with each and everything it may be the customized branch which will be dealing with only one type of customers like we are having the agri finance branches we are having the msme branches we are having the retail banking branches over there now these specialized retail asset processing centers actually were opened where the professionals of one kind would be there and they'll be having appropriate knowledge related to the same and definitely they'll be catering better in a better manner right and also the main objective is related to what so as to provide the professional approach to the customers and further so as to reduce the TAD. 
so for the effectiveness of the scene the turnaround time is mentioned now turnaround time is let's say if the time is mentioned to be that the loan will be disbursed after receiving the application in just five days now that's a turnaround time so as to make it effective uh, definitely the special uh, specific branches are there so that the time can be reduced right and uh, the second one it's related to business correspondents and business facilitators now in 2006 actually what happened rba gave the guidelines that banks who are deploying two other categories of banking intermediaries they can be deploying other two categories let's say case the bank is having a branch in one region but there is one remote region where the bank is not having branch and it's not profitable for the bank so as to open the branch over there in that scenario bank can be appointing the business correspondents and the business facilitators in that particular region where they will be dealing with the customers now if we talk about first of all the business correspondents these are the individual entities which are actually appointed by the banks over there and they with as business Business correspondents they'll be providing the basic banking services basic banking services like they can be opening the account and further they can be taking the deposit they can be making the uh, payments using the micro items over there they will be acting as agent of the bank and they will be extend helping extending the services to the customers over there right and those areas particularly where no physical branch is available and uh, if you look at the advantages definitely the first advantage is related to financial inclusion because where your branch cannot be opened it can be there and further it basically make the branch service or bank services available in the areas where the bank is not able to open the branches and further it is quite cost effective because there is no uh, motor brick motor uh, you basically do require you just simply appointing a person and the person will be uh, dealing with the uh, customers over there now the person who is appointed is a local localite so they will be having the local knowledge or localized uh, knowledge related to them so they can be attracting more customers and definitely for those area customers it's convenient enough that they can be doing the transactions through that particular business correspondent okay now if we talk about the business facilitators now business facilitators are those who are going to promote the financial products facilitation means who are going to promote the products over there and these can be the financial products and services and they will also be facilitating the banking transactions in the under reserve in the reserved areas over there so banking facilitators or business facilitators they are permitted to refer the client they do refer the clients they pursue the client proposals like taking a, an application asking them for the required documents over there and will be facilitating those particular documents with the bank over there so that, that the bank can be processing the uh, carrying out the transactions but like bcs or the business correspondents can be doing the transactions of their own business facilitators are not allowed to do the transactions their own so they are just acting as an intermediary so that they can be taking the documents or the proposals from the customers and will be providing them to the bank bank will be processing the same or doing the transactions and further will be catering the services to the customers over there right now what are the advantages definitely you can uh, create awareness and further can educate people about the transactions or financial literacy can be there and further assistance in account opening is there because uh, you can get the reference from the business facilitator so as to open the accounts and for the documentation assistance let's say case you want to uh, disburse a loan in that scenario you want to basically uh take uh, different documents then then in that scenario business facilitator can be helping in the same right and uh, the third one it's related to the extension counters now extension counter let's say might you might have seen uh, that uh, let's say there is a very good uh, university or the very good college over there and outside it uh, a business counter of the business or particular let's say extension counter of the branch is being opened over there right so these are the additional service points these are the additional service points which are set up by the banks over there so as to provide the banking services in the locations beyond on their main branch network now the main branch network is somewhere away and further they are going to open their extension counter so that uh, they can be also be they can also be particularly uh, dealing or particular catering service in that particular area and these counter are established uh, in areas with high customer demand or strategic locations but they do not disburse loans so loans are not being disbursed by them but they can be dealing with the cash things over there right and uh, further it's related to electronic and remote delivery channels like you're already aware of that we, there are atms that is a automated teller machine now automated teller machine is a self-service electronic device over there you just visit the machine over there atm machine over there you just insert or swipe the card and further you just enter the pin number that is a personal identification number which is a four digit numerical code numeric code over there and after the verification from the nfs that is a national financial switch or the atm switch your uh, transaction is either authorized or it is rejected if it is authorized the cash amount is dispensed and otherwise it is if it is uh, rejected you won't be getting any cash out of it you can also be doing non-financial transactions and so atms are capable of doing the financial transactions as well as uh non-financial transactions like you can get uh, uh mini statement over there you can actually be applying for checkbook over there you can pay the utility bills
details card to card transfer is possible uh, you can also link the aadhar card so so many services are available through the uh, particular uh, atms also so what is the main objective so as to basically offer convenience to the customers and further so as to uh, move the customers away from the counters because the first of all the atms are cost effective we overall basically we want to reduce the cost of the bank over there and moreover we want to provide convenience to the customers also so there are two types of atms one it is related to the on site atms and the other one it is related to the off site atms now as the name suggests on site atms is basically related to where the atm will be residing itself in the branch over there right it's basically in the branch over there right and when the atm is uh, is beyond the is beyond the branch network so that the customers can be withdrawing the money at their convenience near to their home near to their businesses over there that's off site atm that's probably not near the branch over there right now what are the charges for operations in atm now it's actually mandatory it's actually mandatory that uh, banks must be offering uh, particularly uh, related to any of the location whether the uh, let's say the case that the a customer is belonging to xyz bank now whether the branch is in metropolitan area or the atm is in metropolitan area or in the other area the same bank branch network is to offer five free atm transactions five free atm transactions which will be including financial as well as non financial transactions and further for the transactions at any other atms or any other bank atms at the metro uh, locations over there let's say case uh, a visited some metro location and not the xyz bank's atm but visited the some other bank's atm right now in that scenario three free free financial uh, uh, three free transactions will be given in one particular month three free transactions will be given in one particular month over there and not beyond that and further if there is any other transaction beyond free category of the transaction in that scenario customer would be required to pay rupees 21 per transaction so as to carry out those transaction now whatsoever the free permissible transaction minimum transactions uh, were actually allowed by the bank beyond those particular free transactions the customers are to actually the customers are to basically do what they are to actually pay an amount of rupees 21 per transaction transaction whether it is a financial transaction or it's a non financial transaction and as i told you rbi has mandated the free transactions like in the uh, same very area banking network it's allowed five transaction and for the other uh, particular banks network in the metropolitan area it's a free transaction three free transactions are there right these are the minimum number of free transactions which are particularly suggested by the reserve bank of india and the banks can be allowing more free transactions free of cost for their customers that is as per banks their own will right for this lady to guidelines for failed transactions it's quite important quite important point to note it down so let's say case you visited the bank atm and the atm transaction failed in that scenario the bank has been mandated so it's to resolve such issues and further they are to recredit the customer account with the appropriate amount within a period of t plus 5 days so within 5 banking days so within 5 banking days from the date of transaction the amount is to be recredited into the customer transaction if the uh, let's say that uh, you particularly uh, entered the card you allowed their transaction amount was debited in your account but the amount never dispensed right in that scenario it must be reversed in 5 banking days and if it is not done in that scenario beyond the t plus 5 days for each day a penalty of rupees 100 a penalty of rupees 100 per day will be levied let's say case if there was delay of 5 days in that scenario the bank is having the liability so as to pay rupees 500 to the customer right and after that it's related to the concept of white label atm now let's say case it's a atm of pnb bank that is punjab national bank and further they are maintaining the atm itself that's related to what that's related to the normal atm but what's related to the white label atm where the some nbfc that is non banking company non banking financial company is going to manage the atm and they will be setting up the atm they will be owning the atm they will be operating the income atm over there right that is what that is a white label atm there will be no insignia there will be no logo on that particular atm over there that is why it is said to be the white label atm and in case of white label atm no free transactions are given like i told you that uh, uh, five 
फ्री ट्रांजेक्शन इन द केस ऑफ सेम बैंक नेटवर्क एंड थ्री फ्री ट्रांजेक्शन इन द मेट्रोपोलिटन एरिया इवन बाय द अदर बैंक ओवर दियर दो आर टू बी अलाउड दैट इज नॉट अलाउड वेन यू आर एक्चुअली यूजिंग द व्हाइट लेबल एटीएम एंड इट इज टू बी इंडिकेटेड ऑन द स्क्रीन बिफोर हैंड लाइक बिफोर द कस्टमर इज एक्चुअली प्रोसेसिंग द ट्रांजेक्शन बिफोर हैंड द इन्फॉर्मेशन मस्ट बी शो केसिंग टू द कस्टमर दैट देर कैन बी द अदर एक्सपेंसिस इन्वॉल्व विद इट राइट सो आरबीआई इज एक्चुअली परमिटेड द नोन बैंक एंटिटीज इन कॉर्पोरेट इन इंडिया अंडर द कंपनीज एक्ट दैट दे कैन बी ऑपरेटिंग एंड सेटअप द एटीएम्स इन इंडिया ओवर दियर सो नॉन बैंक एटीएम्स डू एम ऑन द एटीएम्स दे डू बेसिकली ऑपरेट द एटीएम्स दीज आर कॉल्ड द व्हाइट लेबल एटीएम ऑपरेटर्स ओवर दियर एंड द एटीएम्स आर सेट विद द व्हाइट लेबल एटीएम्स राइट एंड फर्दर Now let's understand the ATM issues and the risk over there. First of all, it will be related to frequent breakdown. Now the breakdowns can be due to the power failure. It can be the network failure or the cash handler fault over there, or it could be the machine breakdown itself over there. Now we need to understand the important things. First of all, there must be periodic visits so that we can be knowing the different failures, and further we can be monitoring the same. And also the uptime should be monitored, right? Uptime is related to that you are. particular atm should not be offline for more than some particular duration over there and reports related to the same must be sent to the management over there so that they can also be looking into the same so top management must be knowing about the same and also online system must be there which will be immediately be notifying to the vendors that there is some breakdown or certain their issue in the atm machine over there and further there must be detailed servicing and a further replacement of the system or the replacement of the even atm machine if it has been fixed a number of time but still are the complaints there with and for the periodic preventive maintenance must be taken so that uh, there is no breakdown in the system over there and corrective action must be taken in such a manner that we can be looking at the root cause thing over there right so uh, what other discrepancies in cash is mentioned uh, for major atm network banks over there if we look at the total number of the complaints only and only 0.15% of the complaints are actually related to what these are actually related to the thing that the cash account account was short or there is no dispensation of the cash over there that is the cash was not dispensed only 0.15% of the total number of the complaints are related to this so it's actually related that the regulatory guidelines are so many so much stringent in that scenario and further that indicates that if there is no resolution in that scenario i already told you that it must be resolved in t plus 5 days but if it is not resolved in that scenario per day rupees 100 penalty by the bank is to be paid to the customer over there right and also now it has been mandated it has been mandated by the uh, rbi that uh, there must not be cash out for more than 10 Hours in a particular month, and further, if there is cash out strategy in one particular month for more than ten hours, in that scenario, a penalty of rupees ten thousand per ATM would be imposed on the ATM operator. So now, no whosoever is basically operating the ATM, whether it's a WLA operator or it's a bank operator or cell phone ATM uh, ATM over there, in that scenario, a uh, an a particular liability or particular penalty of rupees ten thousand will be imposed if it is cash out for more than ten thousand over there, and this is as per the reserve. Bank of India's August 2021 circular related to monitoring availability of cash at the ATMs, right? And uh, further, it's related to quality of notes. Now, whatsoever the notes which are actually loaded into the cash trays of the ATMs, those must either be the newly minted notes or those must be ATM fit notes, and those must be sorted and processed by the high tech machines over there, right? And also there be there must be. proper grievance redressal mechanism and the customers must be having the access to the same and the toll free numbers must be given and the toll free numbers must be given also at the back of the atm card and also in the atm machine over there okay so that must be given and for the security measures if we talk talk about the security measures they can be the caretakers who will be taking care of the machine as well and for the there must be arrangements uh, for uh, particular uh, uh, local authority police over there let's say case if there is a fraud particularly uh, there is some mis happening so there must be the contact numbers must be given and also there must be security screen on the machine itself where the person will be entering the uh, pin number over there and for the if the customer is trying for let's say uh, multiple number of times the person is actually trying to enter the uh, personal identification number in that case also there must be logging out of the system okay so these precautions can be there and uh, also the customer must be aware related to what is what are his rights and what are his uh, obligations and further the safety tips must also be given to the customers over there it 
can be related to notices or the posters and customers must be given with a uh, manual or particular letter over there and further it can be through the print media or through the radio advertisement and the further feedback from the customers can be taken through the surveys or through the phone calls over there right and for the ready to process of ATM operations so what is actually process let's say case customer A is uh, visiting a ATM machine and further he is belonging to bank XYZ now when he will be visiting the machine over there and further the he is to insert the card or swipe the card and further after that a personal identification number is to be filled in which will be cross checked from the ATM switch the ATM switch will be verifying the number and will be authenticating and after the authentication he is to select from a number of facilities which are available and he will be particularly be selecting a particular uh, uh, facility over there let's say uh, cash withdrawal or some uh, let's say uh, balance inquiry something like that and for the the customer is allowed to attempt three times to enter the correct pin over there and further if he fails to enter if he fails to enter the pin for uh, three times correctly in that scenario uh, the customer account will be uh, locked and further you are to visit the branch thereafter so to unlock the account and some banks even do allow that the ca uh, card will be blocked for the next 24 hours and after 24 hours it will be unblocked itself right so after verifying the correctness of the pin number the customer is prompted uh, so as for a withdrawal inquiry or for transfer or particular other transaction over there and accordingly the customer will be doing the transaction and further the the information the transaction command will be going to the network switch ATM switch and further from the ATM switch to the concerned bank branch over there and concerned bank over there from the CBS the particular authentication will be done if the person is uh, having that much balance in the account if the account is not blocked or something like that and further if the transaction request is approved the cash will be dispensed okay so that's the case related to it so cash will be collected by the customer but the important point is related to that the denomination will be predetermined by the system based system right so thus there is a set configuration over there and the denomination will be uh, particularly predetermined in that particular scenario right and uh, further it's related to cash recycling machines now what do you mean by cash recycling where you cannot uh, just uh, withdrawing the cash but you can also deposit the cash that's particularly cash recycle like a recycle chain that one thing goes from other and other thing goes to other right so that's particularly kind of cash recycling machine so these are the advanced self level uh, self service banking devices over there those actually combine the features of the ATM and the CDM that is the cash deposit machine and the ATM over there and for the, these machines are designed in such a manner that they can the customers can be depositing the cash they can be drawing the cash without visiting a traditional bank branch right for that's related to point of sale now point of sale is actually electronic machine electronic machine you must have uh, visited the petrol pumps or uh, supermarkets or somewhere so you must have have seen the portable machines also you must have looked at the machines which are connected to a PC or something like that so now in that those scenario both of those are what both of those are the point of sales machines where you are going to swipe your card or particularly insert your card after that uh, you are need to enter your pin verification number your transaction will be authenticated in the same manner and further you can get the transaction done right on the same manner over there right so that's a pos machine over there and further the government of india also allowed the government of india also allowed in 2008 so as to cash to be withdrawn from the point of sale and if we look at the scenario the uh, right now the right now limit is enhanced from rupees 1000 to rupees 2000 per day for the tier one cities at present right now let's understand the types of pos machine over there first of all it's related to electronic cash register that is ecr now it is commonly used high volume used by the high volume merchants let's say case i visited a supermarket and further it's a high volume merchant stage over there in that scenario it's not only just uh, used for payment purposes but also you can be uh, managing the other stuff like uh, you can be managing the inventories and all the things over there so uh, this particular machine will be connected to a telephone line machine dial-up machine over there and further the connection will be made in such a manner you basically inserted or swipe the card the transaction will be done you enter the pin number it will be verified through this particular lines this the uh, particularly it will be reaching out the atm switch and for the same process as we have understood in the case of atm that will be done and authentication will be received and transaction will be done right and after that a print media uh, print particular will be given to the customer over there right so that's the case related to it now the pos process is something related to customer selects the products or services and merchant enters a purchase amount on the pos terminal and after that the customer 
customer present the payment method that whether he wants to pay through the uh, car or through the mobile wallet and also these days it's allowed through qr code also right and the pos terminal verifies the payment details and authorizes the transaction transaction is approved and customer receives a receipt as a proof of payment over there and funds are settled to the merchant accounts by the payment processor now let me just uh, tell you the whole process related to it. let's understand this now let's take the case that uh, a is a customer and he visited a merchant he visited a merchant over there and for the he the merchant entered the value that the cost of whatsoever he wanted to basically receive from your side right so after that you will be inserting the card or particularly swiping the card right uh, these days it's ready to inserting the card rather than swiping the card right it's more uh, particularly secured because it's using the emv technology right now after that you have inserted the card the message will be sent to the atm switch and you have to enter the atm pin over there and the atm pin will be verified over there and after that the verification if the pin is verified then particular message is sent to the network and from the network it is particularly sent to particular bank over there where your account is being maintained now over here the different checks are there related to what amount is allowed for debit or what is a balance in your account over there multiple checks will be there and transaction will be authorized now once the transaction is authorized it will be authorized and further the amount will be set to be paid and further it will be paid but it's not the scenario there is one more party in between that's actually related to the acquiring bank that's related to the acquiring bank now the main fund related to acquiring bank is that that this amount will be settled with the acquiring bank and acquiring bank will be settling this amount in the account of the merchant which is being maintained by the being maintained at the acquiring bank over there right so that's the scenario related to the POS machine processing over there. Now after that it's related to internet banking. Now internet banking is a digital service. Like basically previously what happened that you can just open a website. You can be basically looking at the services over there. It was also kind of internet banking. We can get the access to the different type of services over there, right? And also that's why it's basically divided into three different levels. One is related to basic level service. When we talk about the basic level internet service, what we are talking about, we are just talking about so as to provide the information to the customers about the various products, about the various services which are being offered to both the customers and to the general public over there. That information will be actually be showcased on the website. That's the basic level service over there. Second one, it's related to the simple transactional website. Now simple transactional website means what? That you can be submit the instructions. You can be giving the application for the various services over there, various queries for different services over there. Let's say for the account balances or something like that. That was a simple transactional website. And these days, what website do you see? You see advanced, fully functional websites where you can be transferring the funds. You can be uh, doing the fund based transactions. And further, you can be actually be paying the utility bills. You can be paying your GST or taxes over there. You can do a lot of things uh, using the internet banking website these days, right? And further, who are the eligible customers? Proprietary customers, corporate customers, individual customers, they are allowed, right? But let me just tell you that uh, uh, jointly operated customers are not allowed. They're actually not allowed. Let's say if you're having a joint account operations, okay? So those are not allowed. They can be allowed for the view banking. There are actually two types of transactions. One it is related to view banking and other one it's related to the transactional banking. So view type banking can be allowed in that scenario uh, where the joint accounts are there, but not related to the transaction banking that you cannot be transact anything. You just can be looking at the balancing query or something like that, right? Uh, and further it's related to procedure for availing the service. What is the procedure? You need to submit the application to the bank. Bank will be verifying the KYC and all the things over there. And further, if there is account linkage, let's say if you're having the multiple accounts, you have to link uh, one particular account to the single login ID over there and you will be getting user ID and pa password over there. And further after that, you will be activating the particular internet banking, right? And first time login customer, you need to enter net the banking. You will be entering the ID password and further for the security purpose, you'll be given a uh, first uh, system generated password you may be changing that particular password over there and you can be having the access to the services now as per the reserve bank of india guidelines what are the different guidelines first of all you need to get prior approval from the reserve bank of india it's not the case that you can be launching your internet banking services of your own you need to get prior access from the approval from the reserve bank of india and you must be having a security policy related to same that how you will be dealing with the different things and what security infrastructure we are, we are having so you must be maintaining the minimum infrastructure as prescribed by the reserve bank of india that has to be met right and further whatsoever the breach or failure in the security system is there even if it is minor one that is to be reported to the reserve bank of india that is to be reported to the reserve bank of india and banks should set up the interbank payment gateway for settlement of such transactions like if there is particular transaction so interbank payment gateway so from one bank to another bank transaction is to be submitted and that's an interbank payment gateway must be there so both will be dealing with the same standardization with the one single portal from where the payments can be made right 
Further, only institution who are members of the check clearing systems, only who are the members of the check clearing systems, those can be undertaking the internet banking services over there. Those can be undertaking the interbank, those can be participating in the interbank payment gateway systems over there. And bank must make mandatory disclosures, mandatory disclosures related to the risk involved, related to responsibilities, related to liabilities of the customers through the internet for a disclosure through a disclosure template. So everything must be disclosed that what is your what is the risk involved what is your liability what is our liability right now if after that it's related to internet payment gateway like we have learned related to BEPG na, that is Bharat e-commerce payment gateway this is the same way this basically related to e-commerce gateway or particularly related to how the merchants will be connected to the customers over there so it's related through a gateway over there so when you have to make a payment let's say on the merchant website or something or e-commerce website there is a payment gateway page which will be open and further through that particular gateway you can make the payment and further that gateway is actually uh, you know that gateway is actually interacting with the merchant or website over there so as to basically send them the required information let's say case the uh, transaction reference number or if the transaction is failed or something and what is the failure reason something like that so all the things will be sent and further will be shared through a payment gateway only right and further merchants are enrolled in e-gateway because first of all they are to complete the successful uh, compliance kyc compliance process is to be done or uh, after that only they will be getting access to the gateway right and further it may also be the uh, case that a uh, customized software is installed on the customer's website or the merchant website. Merchant website is basically related to let's say eBay is there or Mantra is there or Flipkart is there, Amazon is there. Now they are having the particular gateway access. Now particular software is installed. Now once you will be visiting the uh, website after making the payment, a pop-up will open or something like that and further you can make the payment over there. And when the transaction is done, you'll be the website will be receiving the details and after based upon that, they will be giving you the confirmation or the invoice related to the same, right? And uh, there are some different security concerns uh, related to the internet banking definitely. First of all, the technology standard because technology is ever evolving and you must be having some basic standards like uh, uh, the firewall installations or uh, in password encryptions over there or uh, access control, user access control, right? And further, it could be related to the verification of digital signatures. Now, digital signature is not related to simple signature only. It's a digital signature in a manner. It's a particular combination so as to check the authenticity and integrity of the code over there right so whensoever the data is being sent or being received over there on both the ends there is an encryption key which is sent along so that we can look into the thing if the data is actually secured and for the no one has tampered the data in between that's basically what we meant to say right so that must be done other than that we are having the pki that is a public key infrastructure now public infrastructure we are having the combination of two keys one it is a private key and one it is a public key and further it is actually a mathematical combination between these two keys in such a manner that these two keys some way are particularly related to each other but using the private key you can be verifying the thing if the data is integrated or not right that that's basically related to what that's related to pk and also other than that the banks must be having the security policy related to same data related to the uh, what infrastructure there is having and what are the different procedures or processes uh, processes they have been following right something related to it and also data privacy protection must be there related to data should not be shared and further whatsoever the data is present on the different servers that must not be compromised data confidentiality is to be maintained and for the risk assessment now let me tell you that uh, risk, uh, internet banking is a definitely there can be the different risks which can be involved over there so the bank must be analyzing by the different models that what type of different risks which can be involved over there so those must all be identified and after identifying the same we must be looking at how we can be reducing the same how we can be mitigating the same risks over there right and for the secure network architecture now whatsoever the network processes you have been using or network culture you have been following you must be having a particular security is related to it right so when so we are talking about the concerns it's not only about the technology it's about the basic technology it's about the uh, what's of the encryption methods you have been using it's related to the data privacy confidentiality integrity risk assessment and mitigation and the network security over there right after that it's related to mobile banking now mobile banking actually does a lot in 2000 what, ha what happened in year 2000 there was a mobile boom when everybody basically started to have or basically to own a mobile now after that people were having the mobile they basically found it very much convenient that they can do the transactions through the uh, particular mobile application only right now in that scenario you are to basically uh, get registered for the mobile application you will be getting a, a mobile pin over there that is m pin over there and further you will be getting a mmid that is a mobile identifier id over there right and further there is a vpa that is virtual private access 
address over there so these are the different things related to mobile banking which have been used and integrated in a different manners whether we are basically using the imps or uh, upi or something like that so those all transactions can be done efficiently and seamlessly through using a mobile user over there through a mobile application over there that is why it is said to be the mobile banking over there so banks are actually offered so as to offer the mobile banking facility to the customers without any daily cap without any limit on the transactions over there whether it's related to the goods or whether it's related to services so financial and non-financial services both are basically allowed through the mobile banking and further first of all it's related to imps now imps is what it is immediate payment system now imps is actually real time fund transfer or electronically money transfers uh, uh, particular fund over there mechanism over there and it's available 24 by 7 it's available 24 by 7 and for the effect to do the fund transfer in imps you must be having mmid that is uh, mobile money id mobile money id is actually the seven digit code it's a seven digit code it's a unique id which is given which a uh, sender and uh, receiver both must be having and for the each mmid can be linked to a it should be linked to a unique mobile number like if you are having a mmid the sender is having mmid receiver is having mmid and for the you will be using this mmid so as to identify the users so as to identify the users and based upon that the particular transaction can be done and for that it could also be related to that you can be using a combination of ifsc that is a, a particular ifs code and for the account number like in a general manner when we use for neft and rtgs purposes through which uh, also you can be making the payment and also it could be related to using the aadhaar number where you are using the aadhaar uh, particular other based remittance services over there that is abrs so as to make the payment in that scenario you will be entering the aadhaar number and whatsoever the account which will be linked to that particular aadhaar number the money will be transferred to that particular account right and further it's related to upi now upi is actually what it is unified payment interface you must have been using the upi again and again upi 2.0 is also there now it's also a real time payment system which is actually developed by npca that is national payment corporation of india has developed the upi over there and further it is used for instant money transfer between the uh, it is also used for peer to be that is for peer to peer purposes it is also used for peer to merchant purposes like when a customer is to send the money to the merchant or the persons are to send money to the different persons or let's say i want to basically send money to you or you want to send money to me we both are using p2p okay and when we are sending it to the merchants over there from uh, one user to the merchant it's p2m over there right and further it can be induced payment also that is pull payment or push payment now pull payment is related to when i want to get money from this particular person let's say i want to basically get money from b now i am basically requesting the money and he the person b will be getting a prompt so as to pay the amount right so that's a pull money and push money where basically i'll be scanning or entering the vp of the person b and i'll be sending the money directly to person b over there right that both the things are available over there it's quite quick and further quite reliable and uh, further it basically uses a vpa that is a, a virtual payment address or it uses a qr code and further you can be making the payment through the same right now the key aspects are related to you can be making the payment through web mobile application and further the payment can be center induced or particular receiver induced like i told you and the further payments are in secured manner and you need to enter your four or six digit unique number over there by which you will be verifying the same and further the payment will be processed right and the payment can be done using the Aadhaar number it can be done through the virtual payment address or it can be through the combination of account number and ifsc code over there it can be done through the using the mobile number and mmid over there right so all the methodologies can be used so as to make the payment right after that it's related to bheem bheem is what bheem is bharat interface for money bheem is bharat interface for money so it is actually an app it is actually an app like uh, you're having the different uh, wallet pay, uh, payments over there same way this is an app where you can be using the quick transactions using the upi you can do the quick transactions using the upi you're having the different payment methods associated like you can make the payments using the vpa that is a virtual payment address you can use a combination of account number and ifs code over there you can further be using the qr code to make the payment you can be using the Aadhaar payment to make the payment over there and further these are different methodologies which are used over there so to make the payment and further you can be having a look at your transaction history it is available in different languages over there you can bank account management over there can be done over there you can block some user or spam some user you can disable some uh, virtual id over there and can be generating some virtual new uh, virtual address over there right all these things are possible through beam after that it's related to ussd that is star 99 hash now when your phone is not smart enough that you can be installing an application you can still be doing the payments using this code you just need to enter this code on your phone you on your keypad dial and further after that you'll be getting a menu 
and once you're entering the menu over there you must be having registered number and for the master must be having the uh, number linked with Aadhaar over there and further it is also dealt by NPCI that is the National Payment Corporation of uh, India over there and further it allows the USSD that is the unstructured supplementary service data so that uh, we can be transacting okay so we, we can be transacting and it is particularly mobile network there is no particular restriction related to mobile network. It's not related to that you are using Geo uh, or VI or ATA. It's not the case. You must be having some mobile and it's working on all the devices. If you're having a SIM card installed, you're having the network on your mobile, you can be using such services. The actual service is designed in such a manner so that the basic banking functions and financial services can be offered to those customers also who are not basically having the access to the smartphones, who are not having the internet connectivity, but they do have a basic mobile phone over there. The process is quite simple. Simple. you have to do, dial star 9 and hash you are to select your language and main menu will be there where the different services will be showcased and further the customer is to basically select the desired service by entering the corresponding number of code over there or particularly after it, the customer is required to enter the mobile pin that is a m pin is to be entered that is a mobile personal identification number is to be entered or if there is any other credential that is basically mentioned you can be entering that particular also the transaction will be authorized and further the transaction will be confirmed and if there is transaction failure in case of the transaction is failed the customer will be receiving a transaction failure message along with the reason of the failure that what was the reason of the failure of the transaction over there right now there are different transactions related to the same. Now let's understand what type of transactions are available. If we talk about the financial service transaction, there you can be sending the money using the mobile number. You can be sending the money using the UPI ID. You can be sending money using the Aadhaar card. Let, uh, you can enter the Aadhaar card of other beneficiary and further can be sending the money to the same. You can be entering the mobile number and for the IFSC code, you can be requesting money using the UPI. Not only you can be sending money, but you can also be requesting money using the UPI and the mobile number over there. And if we talk about the known financial services, in that scenario, you can check the bank balance. You can set the new UPI pin and for the you can change the UPI pin you can have a mini statement where you can check the last five statements and the value added services are available on star 99 star 99 hash and for the you can Aadhaar link status you can check the overdraft facility in your PM JDY Pradhan Mantri Jantani Yojana accounts over there right so these are the different facilities which are offered through star 99 hash that is USSD over there right so that's the scenario now let's have a look at the funds transfer limit in case of USSD now what is it it is actually rupees 5000 in case of USSD per transaction right after that it's related to UPI 123 pay now UPI 123 pay is actually related to it it's an instant payment system instant payment system for the feature phone which will be using the UP payment services in safe and secure manner so it's particularly instant payment system UP123 instant payment system and for the UPA payment through predefined IVR number can be done you pay payment through predefined instant voice response number can be done so customer need to call a specific number a specific number will be given you need to call on that specific number from the registered feature phone over there and we need to follow the transaction over there so as to set up the you pay for their account and for the ones you have on board and this particular particular facility in that scenario we can be calling to that particular you IV number giving a missed call to that IV number so as to perform those financial transactions securely right so that's the case and we can also be making the payment through the miss call over there with this approach feature phone user can access their bank account can perform the transactions by giving a miss call let's case uh, you just call a miss call uh, you just call a number and you'll be getting the bank account statement or the last transaction statements over there right so these are the features which are available so feature phone with payment functionality can also be there so it basically related to what let's say that you are having a feature phone feature is phone is basically that phone is not smartphone over there if you're having a feature phone so it may be the case a uh, application can be developed by a third party company application can be developed by a third party company which will be basically integrating which will be integrating the different prospects of star nine and hash or something and for the on the go you can be accessing all the things as a an, an mobile application in that feature phone over there and further can be accessing the same right and for the proximity sound based technology and the voice based payments proximity sound based technology and voice based payments this has been developed in coll uh, collaboration with tone tag okay it has been developed in collaboration with tone tag and is supported by the nsdl payment bank over there and now technology is actually using what it is using the sound waves to enable contactless offline and proximity data communication like we are having one technology nfc near field connectivity right and the other one it's particularly developed by the tone tag and supported by the nsdl where it will be basically using the sound waves so as to communicate the transaction 
in contactless manner over there right and further it's related to customers liability on unauthorized electronic transactions now what is the customer's liability on unauthorized electronic transactions there are many things related to let's understand this and this topic is quite important this is quite important topic kindly please note it down okay so the banks may not offer the facility of electronic transactions on uh, other than the atm cash withdrawals or other thing related to it on receipt of a report of unauthorized transaction from the customer banks must be taking immediate steps let's say the case a went to the branch and said this transaction is not done by me I am not who have done this particular transaction. So bank must be taking the immediate steps so as to prevent further unauthorized transaction in the account over there. That's the first thing. And further, what is the liability of the customer in respect of unauthorized transaction? First of all, it's related to zero liability of the customer. In what case it will be zero liability customer? Let's the case there is contributory fraud, there is negligence, there is deficiency on the part of the bank. On the part of the bank, uh, whether it has been reported by the customer or it has not been reported by customer. Kindly please note it down. So when it's related to on the part of the bank and further whether it has been reported by the customer or not reported by the customer. Now in that scenario, there lies a responsibility with the bank only. There lies the customer responsibility with the bank only, right? It may be the case that the third party breach is there or deficiency lies neither with the bank nor with the customers, but there is some deficiency in the banking system over there, right? And further, in further, the customer has notified the same within a period of three working days of receiving the communication from the bank regarding the unauthorized transaction. Okay, now in that scenario, the there is zero liability of the customer. The one part it's related to when the particular issue is with the bank over there, then the customer is not liable at all, first of all. And second, when the third party breach is there, where the bank is not responsible, customer is not responsible, but the error lies somewhere in the system over there. In that scenario also, if the customer does report within three working days, three working days of a bank over there, in that scenario also, the customer will be having zero liability, right? And for the limited liability of the customer will be there in case, let's say case there was negligence at the customer's part. Okay, let's say case the customer has shared the credentials. The customer basically has to bear the entire loss. It has to bear the entire loss of the unauthorized transaction done beforehand. Let's say case the customer said that previously uh, 5,000 rupees were debited from my account and he reported to it on 11th of July. 11th of July this was reported and further he said kindly please do some appropriate action. Now on the 17th of July again the amount was debited. Now in this case for this particular previous amount when the report was not done for this particular amount the customer will be responsible but after that when the customer has reported for this transaction now after that whatsoever breach has happened for this the bank will be having the liability for this bank will be having the liability and for the in cases the responsibility of the unauthorized electronic banking transactions lies with the bank nor with the bank nor with the customer over there but lies anywhere in the system but there is a delay let's say case first of all i told you if particularly there is no particular issue no issue at the customer end no issue at the bank end but somewhere in the system and the customer reports it in the three working days then the customer is having the note liability no liability but it is reported between four days to seven days if it is reported between the four days to seven days after receiving the communication over there on the customer of the, on the part of the bank over there on per transaction liability on per transaction liability there is a limited liability on the customer as mentioned below let's have a look at it right so if it is particularly reported within a period of four to seven days and the customer is having limited liability in case of basic saving bank deposit account the liability is fixed to rupees five thousand and in all the other bank saving accounts or prepaid payment instruments or gift card prepaid instruments instruments or gift cards over there uh, the liability is fixed to rupees 10,000 and also in case of CC limit overdraft limit where the balance is up to uh, 25 lakh rupees over there and in that scenario also it is limited to uh, 10,000 over there and also for the credit cards with limit up to 5 lakh rupees over there uh, the li maximum liability is up to 10,000 rupees over there. I'm talking about what case where the issue is not related to customer, not related to bank, but related to system somewhere and customer reports between four to seven working days after the particular unauthorized uh, report which has been confirmed by the bank over there the customers will be having maximum liability maximum to this amount and other than that particular liability is to be borne by the bank itself right and further for the credit cards which for which the limits is above rupees 5 lakh the maximum liability of 25,000 is with the customer and rest all lies with the bank over there right now let's have a look at the timeline for reversal of unauthorized transaction now it may be the case that uh, you have reported the unauthorized transaction 
and what is the timeline what is the tat that is turn around time for basically compensating for the same right let's have a look at it on being notified by the customers the bank shall be actually reversing the transaction reversing the transaction in 10 working days in 10 working days from the date of notification by the customer over there without waiting for settlement on insurance claim if even if there is some insurance claim the bank shall not be waiting for the same within 10 working days the amount is to be settled in the customer's account if the unauthorized transaction has been reported by the customer and these 10 days will be counted from the day when the customer has reported to you okay and for the bank at their own dis uh, discretion at their own discretion they can also be waiving of the customer liability let's say case even if i told you 4 to 7 working days were there and for there is a minimum liability like i told you in bsbd account it is 5000 rupees over there bank can even be waiving of this particular liability they can even be waiving of this particular liability in that scenario right now let's understand the tat that is a turn around time and customer compensation for failed transaction using the authorized payment system over there first of all let's say the case we are talking about the atms including the micro atms over there let's say case the customer trans account was debited but the cash was not dispensed in that scenario it is t plus 5 days maximum that the account must reversal must be there and further if the reversal is not there in that scenario penalty of rupees 100 per day is to be paid by the bank is to be paid by the bank over there right and further when we talking about the card transaction and when we are talking about the card transaction and we are talking about the card to card transfer we are talking about the card to card transfer in that scenario the card account debited but the beneficiary account is not credited the card account is debited let's say a basically paid an amount to b through the card to card transfer a's account was debited but b is not credited in that scenario the transaction is to be resolved in one working day it is to be resolved in one working day and if there is delay beyond one working day in that scenario there is penalty of rupees 100 per day to be there and for the if there is pos transaction pos transaction or pos transaction can be of two types it can be card present transaction and further it can be card not present pr transactions right so we are talking about the card present transactions over there that is cp pos cp transactions over there including cash at pos debited or particularly related to confirmation is not received or let's say case particularly charge slip is not generated let's say case two cases can be there one is related to when the card was present at pos and let's say case uh, i withdraw some account i basically was withdrawing some account now in that scenario uh, my account was debited but the confirmation was not received now when the confirmation is not received definitely the uh, pos mer uh, pos uh, owner or pos merchant will not be giving me the money now in that scenario that is also to be resolved that is also to be resolved within 5 working days over there and also it may be the case that i made some online payment using the pos and further i basically swiped the card or basically inserted the card but the confirmation was not received but my account was debited that is also to be resolved within 5 working days over there and if not then uh, beyond 5 days beyond t plus 5 days a uh, particular penalty of rupees 500 is to be a uh, particular penalty of rupees 100 per day is to be paid right and after that it's lead to imps in case of imps if the account is debited but the beneficiary is not credited in that scenario it is to be reversed in t plus 1 day it is to be reversed in t plus 1 day otherwise beyond that rupees 100 per day penalty and if we talking about the upi if we are talking about the upi if the account is debited but the beneficiary account is not credited in that scenario also auto reversal must be there by the beneficiary bank latest on t plus 1 days if not done then 100 rupees penalty per day right and for the if account is debited but transaction confirmation not received if second case related to upi it can be there related to what it can be there related to account has been debited but transaction confirmation not received at merchant location when we are, we are doing the payment to the merchant like basically we use a upi for payment to the merchant and for the the payment confirmation is not received to us that can also be the case there in that scenario also in that scenario the reversal can be there in t plus 5 days like someone basically use the upi method online so as to make the payment right and further the payment was uh, debited from my account but the confirmation was not there in that scenario the time period is t plus 5 days right but when you are actually but when you actually trying to transfer it to some beneficiary some beneficiary not to the merchant but to some beneficiary we are talking about p2p over here we are talking about p2p over here and further we are talking about the p2m over here right so in case of p2m it is 5 days and in case of p2p it is 1 day right and after it is aeps aps is aadhar enabled payment system aadhar enabled payment system where account is debited but transaction confirmation is not received at merchant location again we are talking about the merchant payment in that scenario it is t plus 5 days and for the if the beneficiary is not credited that is we are talking about p2p over there peer to peer transfer over there using the aeps 
Then in that case, in case of AEPS, for both the scenarios, it is T plus 5 days. For AEPS, for both the scenarios, it is T plus 5 days. And when we are talking about the APBS, that is the Aadhaar Payment Bridge System. In the case of Aadhaar Payment Bridge System, if there is delay in creating the beneficiary account, in that scenario, reversal must be there in one day. A reversal must be there in one day. And further, it could be related to NACH. Now, it's related to NACH. We have already talked about NACH in the previous video. That is National Automated Clearing House over there. Now, if there is delay in creating the beneficiary account. Now, let's say case, if there was NACH credit. NACH credit. Now, what happens in NACH credit? Multiple accounts are to be credited. And there is delay in creating the beneficiary account. Then, in that must scenario, it must be reversal to the uh, reversal of the uncredited balance must be there within one day if it is not reversed then there is penalty of rupees 100 day beyond t plus one day and for the account debited despite revocation of debit mandate let's say if the debit mandate was given but still the amount was debited by the bank from the customer account and that's it the amount must be reversed in one working day if it is not done in that scenario rupees 100 penalty per day is to be there right so that is actually all about the different delivery channels in retail banking so i hope that you must have enjoyed the video so do rate the video out of 10 over here and don't forget to like this video and share this video among your friends and colleagues who have been preparing for jrb 2024 the full course is available on our website like i told you that uh, it is jrb.learningsessions.in you can also be referring your friends and further can be earning through the same uh, for each sign up through your referrals you'll be getting rupees 20 and for each conversion you'll be getting rupees 500 up to rupees 500 so do enroll right now and also on sign up you'll be getting access to all the pdfs free of cost all the four papers video free of uh, pdf free of cost so do enroll right now and start preparing for the same thank you so much and see you again in the next video